Coming into the 2024 season, the biggest question mark on the Baltimore Ravens was the offensive line. Replacing three starters, we had the biggest question marks. There were essentially going to be three rookies playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Even though they weren't rookies in NFL years, they would be new starters on the team. Looking at the picture that on your screen, you see a massive, massive hole that's being opened up by Derrick Henry with Dane Falele, who was probably the biggest question mark when he was labeled as a starter. Incrementally, he's gotten better. The offensive line as a whole has gotten better. But I just want to talk about what they've done in the rushing game throughout this 2024 season. Week by week, they've done their job in the run game. Passing game, you know, has been hit or miss and has gotten better, but the run game, they've been solid. Week one, 185 yards. Week two, 151 yards. Week three, 274 yards. Week four, 271 yards. Week five, 175. Week six, 176. And week seven, which was yesterday, well, Monday, 244. That's three 200-plus-yard games out of seven. The O-line is getting incrementally better in the run game, and they're starting to put stuff together, which is the reason why we can kind of talk about Derrick Henry for MVP if Lamar wasn't playing as good as he is. Let's take a look at some of the big runs from Thursday. Oh, sorry, not Thursday, from Monday night versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and see what the O-line did to help Derrick Henry, Lamar, and Zay Flowers. Get big runs. Welcome back to Tip to Tally Pimps. All right, let's take a look at the runs that were 10 plus yards from Monday night. And, you know, individually, the O-line, you know, has played better. Collectively, they've played better. But on each run, there's somebody that did something to spring them. And so there's always maybe one, maybe two, or maybe even a collection of guys that do something to make an explosive run happen. And there may even be some wide receivers involved in this to help, you know, have big runs. Because most of the time when you have big runs, there's going to be a wide receiver or, or tight end that contributes to that big run. So, but this is going to focus on the O-line, but if it happens to be a wide receiver or a skilled guy down there getting involved, we're going to highlight them too. Let's start here. Derrick Henry going to get this carry. It's just the inside zone that's going to cut back. And the guy we're going to highlight here is Rosengardner. And we talk about Rosengardner not being as, as as strong or whatever, but 43 is going to try to cross his face. And we're running inside zone, like with this guy trying to cross his face, Rosengarn just got to wash him down. And Rosengarn does a good job of just getting on that inside number and just driving him all the way down. And the guy that kind of taught me the ins and outs of, of O-line stuff, inside zone, zone is just inside number drive. You get to that inside number and you drive him down. And this is going to be a perfect example of that. I mean, there's other techniques to the words I said, but that's just a, a simple, you know, little catch words you can kind of use to teach the kids with. That guy tries to cross his face. He got him inside. And now you got a wall with everybody else. You got a head on the head with Ronnie, with um, Macari, with Lindebaum. Uh, Lele has gotten a second level, which we're not used to him doing. Look at Lele. Throw that hand. He didn't used to do that. Checking that gap, seeing that, uh, making sure uh, Lindenbaum got that. Uh, he going to second level. Uh, Lele used to did not do that. Now it's a hole, but we'll take him getting the second level. We'll take him getting the second level. And again, I talked about progression. He's getting better. He's getting better. It's week seven, week eight, week nine. This is when we say it. If he can get increment, incrementally better, he should be all right. Week seven, week eight, week nine. This is week seven. Look at Rosengarden. Getting a lot better. I think Rosengarden is progressing faster, but we'll take it. We'll take it. And Derek is just being a back. Because Winfield, he has to choose. You're either going to come down and take Lamar, or you're going to come down and take Henry. His angle was at Lamar. 
Henry seen the back door. And now it's one-on-one -on -one with uh, Whitehead and Derrick Henry. And a business decision had to be made. Come on, bait. Now, I talked about wide receivers blocking. So, it didn't happen this time. But let's just say Bate takes care of McCullum. I think 27 McCullum. Let's just say Bate takes care of McCullum. Look how big of a run this would have been. Because 31, 23, and 3, they want no part of, of Derrick Henry. And I talk about a big run. Who is this blocking this 23? That's Nelly. Uh, wide receivers. If you get a, if wide receivers block, those six or seven eight yard runs from, from running backs, they turn into 20, 30, 40 yard runs. And again, if Bate gets this guy, this runs probably 70, 80 yards, maybe even a touchdown. Maybe even a touchdown because he gets another seven or eight yards based off Nelly's block. And imagine if Bates got his block because three don't want no parts of that. Let's go to the next one. But a good job by Rosa Gardner, good job by Far Lele of creating the initial space for him to get to the secondary. I'm going to get some more outside zone from Derrick Henry right here. Remember, we don't, we're not getting that shuffle out of Falele that we used to get at the beginning of the season. We not get, look at him, look at his feet. Look at Falele's feet. They're in sync with everybody else's now. They're in sync with everybody else's. Rosen Garner got half a man. Falele got half the man. We look better with our feet. We look better with our feet. Now. Kolar does a good job when he slants, when Tryon Sharinga crosses his face. Kolar does a good job of taking that outside shoulder, taking him to Ronnie, and then coming up to linebacker. That's a great job by Kolar on the double team. Kick out by Ricard, because I think early in the game, that guy set the edge on Ricard, and Ricard wasn't aggressive enough, and he kind of got the tackle on, on Derrick Henry. This time, Ricard kind of goes to him and knows what's happening. And Derek is far enough back that he can see he can let the block happen. Now, a decision has to be made by Winfield. Now, we know Winfield is one of the better safeties in the league, but I think Winfield made some business decisions this game because it's one-on-one -on -one with him and Derrick Henry. One-on-one. -on -one. That's a business decision. He over. That's, that's a business decision. That's a business decision, people. Now, we're back to our O-line. Look at the quickness of McCart. Well, he did, he did shoot the back cap. Linda Bond picked it up, which is great. Falele, cook good. Rosen Gardner, good. Good job with the turn back by McCarry. Great job with the turn back by McCarry. Killing the rat. Great recognition at the last minute by McCarry. See him? Bam. Pop him up. Ryan with the pop-up. Kolar with the pop-up. You got a wall right there. Then the business decision by... By, um... Wingfield, we off and running. We off and running. And again, when um the game first started, I had a, a young fella behind me. He was a cool dude. Now he was up 10-0. He was yelling, hi, y'all, whatever. We, we on y'all ass, yada, yada, yada. I said, look, look yeah, man, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And by, by the middle of the third quarter, silence. Silence. We got a toss. And, and, and using their aggression against them, we've been getting a lot of a lot of yards off this toss. And so we're going to fake this toss, and, and these two backers, David and Britt, they going to take off. We're going to fake this toss, and these two guys, they're going to they gonna be gone. And he's going to take that step and come downhill, and he's going to already have leverage on them because those two guys are going to be up out of there. Taking that toss. And look at the double team by Falele and – uh, and and uh, Linda Baum on Vita Vale. And you got to double team him because he's a dude. Mm, I love it. Look at the double team. Hip to hip. Hip to hip. And then when Britt activates, Falele comes off. I love it. Falele is really getting better. Really getting better. And he's even being held by uh, Vita Vale. But good job of Henry of seeing it and setting it up. Henry seeing that even though, you know, there's a double team on Vita Vea, Ricard can't block both of them linebackers. 
And he sees the, the double team backside because 52 overran it. And so now McCarry and McCarry and Ronnie Stanley's double team is where Derrick Henry's probably going to hit that thing. Uh, attempts to hit it. And now look who's the lead blocker. Your two-time MVP. I talked about the skill guys helping out in the run game. Well, we never thought our quarterback would be a lead blocker. And look at the effort by our quarterback. 28, we're going to outrun you. There's that Wingfield guy again. There's that Wingfield guy again. Mmm, still form. Mmm, you just we just happened to step out on this still form. Mmm, still form. There's that Wingfield guy again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Wingfield. There's that guy again. You got lucky, Wingfield. Try on you didn't want none of that. Try on you really didn't want none of that. But good job, O line, of, of doing your thing and getting our guy to second level. Because once he gets to second level and third level, he starts to embarrass people. Here's our quarterback. Is this our quarterback? Not the same play. Here's our quarterback right here. Not mistaken, Power Reed, if I'm not mistaken. Getting on down blocks by everybody. Look at the big fella pulling. Now, I love, now, this I do love. He don't do it great. But I love the fact that he slows down to make sure he don't overrun his block. His assignment is 52. His assignment is 52. Slow down. And he don't get enough. He don't get a huge block on him, but he gets enough on him. Gets enough on him. Look at the, look at the hole. He don't, he don't execute it perfectly, but he don't miss his assignment either. And I can live with that. I can, I can live with that. And and the reason he does that, because he don't come down here, he don't come around here, balls to the wall. He gathers his feet, finds his guy, and gets contact on him. Like, like I said, he don't knock him out, he don't pancake him. He gets the job done though. And look and look at the down blocks. You get a down block from from Macari, which is great. You get Ronnie helping. They are coming to the backside backer on Levante David with um McCard and Ronnie. And so look at the wall. Lamar's not even touched till he's seven, eight yards down the field. Incrementally better. Incrementally better. And I can live, I can deal with that. I don't have no problems with that. Huge hole. And on this, this play right here is A Flowers. Now, technically, technically, this is not the O-line because they're kind of the um they're kind of the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, shoot, I'm having a brain fart. Um, the decoys, they're the decoys. The actual lead blockers in this are Mark and Ricard, but the O line will come back into play once they start cutting it back. And I just want to applaud that effort. I want to applaud that effort. So you see the O line are decoys because Zay has the ball now. And they're, we're faking it to Henry. So the, all the O-line are decoys. The real blockers right now are Cola, uh, not Cola, Mark and and uh, Ricard. But you see Roger Rose going to, going to get somebody already. Now once they start all this cutback, the O-line is going to come into play. So I'm applauding the effort by the O-line. So it's a good job by Mark and Ricard. Look at Rosengarden already on Levante David. Now look as they cutting it back. Look at the O line coming down field of help. Look at Linda Bum chasing Vita Vea. Look at Bate getting 24. Remember I talked about the what the wide receiver, the other skilled guys getting involved? Look at Bate getting 24. Look at Linda Bum chasing Vita Vea. Linda Bum hunting Vita Vea. He hunting him. I love it. 20, 30 yards downfield. Hunting the biggest dog on Tampa Bay's team, Vita Vea. I love it. This to me, this is a team that is fully bought in offensively. Like they don't, they don't mind who gets the job done as long as it gets done. And I love what I see. It no matter like who catches the ball, who's running it, who's throwing it. Like they all for one, one for all. And I love what I'm seeing right now. If we just got to get it together on the other side, and we're gonna talk about some of the stuff on the other side here in a later video. But I appreciate you guys for coming out, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. If you're still here, like the video. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos come out. Remember the, the motto, 
FTMF. We do have FTMF merch. If you liked it, let me know if you want to get some. The link should be in the description. And um, I'll see y'all in the next one, man. Peace and love. Peace out.